Oh, that wind. I've kept the polarizer off just so I can get the shutter speed down fast enough to actually hold this still. I don't know if that's coming out, it's all right, it's not too bad.
God, that wind! <laughs> Oh mate, a windy one a day, isn't it? Getting <laughs> some good shots. Yeah, 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 I was hoping for a bigger waves to be honest. I think it was a lot windier this morning when I looked from the forecast. Oh yeah. I was hoping to get some nice big crashing waves on that lighthouse, but not happened. But that's all right, isn't it? Too bad, because you still have them clouds disappearing. I'll get a bit of nice light. <laughs> have a good day, mate. Right? Oh, what, sorry? Idea. Yeah, well, I think it's meant to, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm hoping it just clears away a bit for sunset, really, but you never know. Anyway. Have yeah, a good day, mate. A bit of light coming from. looking for if you can hear me in there when you start to get some break in the clouds and the light so it's just casting itself across that's when things start to look interesting it gives you contrast it gives you depth
this once. Look at that, see? How much better does that look? Contrast and interest in the clouds. And that shot. Cast in light. interested to test on this camera. The difference in contrast is between the shadows and the light, you know, how well it maintains that detail. I'll take it back into uh, processing it. See the difference, look, I'll take this at 40 mil. Compare that to the 70 I've done a minute ago. That's a 40. I'll pull that out right at the 17. Yeah, just about the 17. Look at the difference in the image. see those um, the clouds, you know, and the sun. Because what I wanted to get, right on this spot here, was this at sunset. So I wanted that, you know, the sun going down. Should come down just near the cliffs over there somewhere. Just a lovely sunset shot of this, but I think because of the clouds and the horizon, I just don't think it's going to happen tonight. But we might, you might. I don't know, I'll walk back up here in a bit, we might get the, um, you know, the burning red sky. Who knows, I don't know, I looked at my forecasting apps, it wasn't meant to be like this. Never mind. I will come back here.
I'll tell you what I do, look, I'll show you how I do this. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do anyway. Let's just take a photo of it with my phone. And later on, oh, I hope I'll high enough so you can see it. Later on, you just come in, click in information, and then it gives you the GPS location of where that is. And you can just come back to it. I mean, it's not hard here because I'm walking on the cliff edge. There's only so many places I can go, but yeah, give that a go later on. Sorry, I keep sniffing. Yeah, I like that. Ooh. That cliff's been cracking away, so be careful of that. So, I think you can see. Let's tell you what my point of focus is. You see, I've just fixed into what Canon calls a flexi zone single. And I'm keeping the cliff edge as my point of focus. I'm just down at f4, so my, it's a very shallow depth of field for this lens, or the shallowest it can be. But it looks good on the back of the screen anyway. We'll see what it's like when it comes up on the computer. It does look really nice on the back of my uh, my camera. My camera's LCD. Oh! I didn't explain that correctly a minute ago. Let me start over again. Basically, I set up on a tripod because what I want to be able to do is narrow my aperture down so go into a higher F number so I bring more of my scene into focus. I keep my ISO low so my image isn't too noisy. And that way, Get a nice, well, as clean a, as clean an image as I can make, and then, then a nice clean image, <coughs> all as much in focus as I want to be, the correct aperture. When I blow it up onto a big print, you get a nice clean image. Whereas if I was to do it handheld, I've got to keep my aperture wide open so I can keep a fast enough shut, fast enough shutter speed. So that when I take the, uh, you know, I take the picture, there's not motion, no motion, but I shape from my hands. So that's that's the reason why it's, why I'm setting up on a tripod. It's to do with my aperture, my depth of field, and also my ISO. So yeah, I think that's a better explanation than the one I gave a moment ago. <laughs> I don't really know. Oh, look at that sun. put as low as I can it's away from the wind and I've definitely got that sun I was after look at that light 
right. I don't know how much of this you can see on the back of the screen, but anyway, I didn't bring all the gear with me today to be able to do the particulars that I do for the videos. Position and I'm going to try and get the sun, lighthouse in the centre, the sun on the third, the cliffs just beyond that, so I'll just bring out my thing. Oh, that's a lemon for that. I might have to haste the hardest image, but we'll see. In fact, that's what I will do, I will take one. Point of focus in this one is going to be the lighthouse itself. Set up the timer. Two second timer. Hope that this stays still enough in that wind. F11. Five seconds am I on? No, I'm not. One fifth of a second. That might be alright. I don't know if you can see the histogram there. Put it up, hopefully you can see the screen a bit better. That might be all right. I'm gonna take a shot like that and see what it's like. I'm gonna hold my tripod down. See what that's like. And it's pretty good, I think, for focus. That's the best I'm gonna get now. Just going to try a different perspective. It. Oh. I don't like the tripod in this position without the wind, to be honest. But she's not open. She's disappeared. Still, I've got the shot I wanted. Not quite getting the burning skies up. I don't think I do. 